ladies. We just wanted to give you homage and privilege to the ladies that I personally, through my years of doing, doing business, that have a great deal of respect for. And as you can see, we've got a, a, great, a, ride, uh, uh, a, a great number of beautiful women. What I mean are business women, strong women with a backbone and posture that I have a great deal of respect for. And these ladies all have something in common. They're very strong women. And I'm so glad to know them personally and know how strong they are as a person. And I want to thank you all for joining this call tonight. You know, we're talking about the visionary for 2020 20 and beyond. These women have been visionaries. They've been very good. And I love them. I cherish them. And I, uh, it takes a real man to bow down to women to say I respect you as a woman, as a mother, as a leader, and also as a business builder and a thought leader for the 2020 20 and beyond. Tonight, we've got two dynamite women, and we're going to have every, every, listen up, every Friday night, same time for the next four weeks in leadership with these women. Now, tonight, let me explain tonight. This is a generic call because it goes across the bounds of every race, creed, color, but no matter what business you're in, these are powerhouses, okay? And you need to listen to them. Men as well, listen up. All right. Now, the first lady on the call tonight, we've got two dynamite ladies, as you saw the text that's been out there on Facebook, chat, tap, hit, tap, that, that, and all the things else. We got two dynamite ladies. The first lady I want to introduce you to tonight is Miss Orrin Solomon. Miss Orrin Solomon, let me share who this lady is. This lady is a, is a powerhouse. I know her husband very well. Uh, in her own right, listen up. She's a mother of three beautiful boys. They're stair steps. She's an author. Yeah, you heard me right, an author. And uh, she may talk about that tonight. She's an author. Um, also, her husband has an international business that's in 20 different countries. But tonight, we're not here to talk about him. We're talking about her accomplishment as a strong woman standing by her man, but also in her own right, has done some things, her accolades are endless and priceless. She also has a home-based business. She may go into a little bit tonight. She's a real estate developer, ladies and gentlemen. She's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So we're not, I mean, talk about it. Where should she find the time? Not only a lawyer, she's a homemaker. Uh-huh. And my God, what is it she does not do? This woman is a quiet storm. I've been knowing her husband for years. She doesn't say very much, but I tell you, she is a powerhouse. I have so much respect for her. So without further ado, she, she hails from the state of Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Maryland area. Like I said, mother of three, an author, a housewife, a, a homemaker. She's also a businesswoman, has her own business, and, and she's a developer in real estate, a lawyer. And without further ado, the great, the one and only, the Miss Orrin Solomon. Oh, Angela Solomon, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm still Mrs. Orrin Solomon, too. Well, good evening. <laughs> First, I want to thank Mr. Al Thomas for inviting me to share some words with you this evening. I think the world of Mr. Thomas, and it speaks volumes of his character, his leadership, and his vision to put together this series of calls every Friday night in the month of October. He has been an impactful mentor to me as a businessman and as a family man. And I just truly have the utmost respect for Mr. Thomas. So thank you again for your time and your wisdom, sir. So you're welcome. Thank you. As Mr. Thomas said, my name is Angela Solomon, and I appreciate you taking time to be with us on the call this evening. I know it's the weekend and you could have been doing an, any number of things, but you chose to be with us, which really speaks volumes about your commitment and your desire for success. Now, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that it is October. We are in the last month of 2019 already. I cannot believe that. Um, 2020 is right around the corner, but it now is the perfect time for us to start thinking about 2020 with 2020 vision. And that is what I wanna to talk to you about tonight, thinking about 2020 with 2020 vision. And I wanna to talk to you about some steps doing that. But before I get into that, let me just quickly give you a little bit of background about myself. Like Mr. Thomas said, I do live in Maryland, right outside Washington, D.C. I kind of live equal distance between D.C. and Baltimore, 20 minutes from both places. But I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I grew up in a pretty tough neighborhood, you know, drugs, crime, um, you know, just all kind of bad stuff. Bullet hole through my living room window from a random drive-by shooting. It was pretty tough. And we didn't really have a lot of money, but with the money that my mother did have, she scraped it together to put me in the private school on the other side of town because my mother believed that education was the key to a better life. And I was a good girl. I mean, I got good grades in high school. I went to college at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, go blue. I went to law school at the George Washington University Law School right here in Washington, DC. 
So, but when, when people, when adults and teachers used to ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I never said lawyer, but here I am today being just that. But honestly, what I really wanted to be when I was little was successful. But the odds of me being successful weren't really in my favor just because of my background and my circumstances. But let me tell you, with everything in me, I always believed that God had a bigger plan for my future. Now, because nobody in my life was all that successful or being an entrepreneur, nobody ever told me about personal development. But what was great for me is that I always loved to read and I loved to go to the library and bookstore. And so on one visit to the bookstore, I was drawn to this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now, the title intrigued me and it was right in line with the goals I had for my life. So I picked up the book right after that in my early 20s. Now, a couple of years later, when I was working at the law firm, another book intrigued me. It was by Robert Kiyosaki. And he has a series of books on life and money. And it was after I read that book <clears throat> that I realized that my mother and I had been bamboozled. So not that education isn't important. Absolutely. Knowledge is very important. But getting an education to get a job, because at that point I was working 50 to 60 hours at a law firm, getting paid significantly less than I knew I was worth, and I was taking my time to make someone else rich. And that wasn't really in line with the goals that I set for my life. So one of the partners that I worked with really closely, he was actually one of the owners of the law firm, he actually took me to the side one day and he said, Angela, you will never get wealthy working here because lawyers bill by the hour and there are only so many hours in a day. So think about that. And so I did think about that. And I said, wow, thinking about what the partner said to me and also thinking about what I was reading in the books that I was reading, I knew I had to do something different if I wanted to reach my goals. I knew I needed to think about leveraging my time. I knew I wanted to work less, but make more. And according to Robert Kiyosaki, I needed to move myself to the right side of the cash flow quadrant. So I had some work to do. But in the midst of all this happening, I actually met my husband who had already figured this out. He was already an entrepreneur. He, was, he had a business that was earning residual income. Now, when I met him, <clears throat> I had no idea what residual income was, right? And maybe you're like me, so I'm gonna just tell you what it is. Residual income is money that you make of doing something one time. You get paid over and over and over from doing something one time. So let me just give you an example of that. Michael Jackson, who was no longer with us, he made $400 million last year. Now, how did he do that? That's residual income. Elvis Presley, he's no longer with us. He made $40 million last year. Robert Schultz, I don't know if you're a comic book fan like me, but I used to always like to read the Sunday paper, the comic, book, the comic section. But Robert Schultz made the Charlie Brown, the Peanuts comic strip. He made $34 million last year, and he is no longer here. Okay, so that is residual income. It keeps going and going, whether you keep going or not. Now, I don't know about you, but residual income is exactly what I needed in my life. So because my husband's business had residual income, and it still generates residual income today from things he did years ago, but I was able to quit my job at the last time 19 years ago, and I was able to stop trading my time for money. And when I was working full time, I was coming home from work every night. I was mentally exhausted. I was exhausted. I barely had enough energy to cook dinner, bathe my son that I had. I had one son at that time and put him to bed before it was time to get up and do the whole routine again. Boy, was it exhausting. But by buying back my time, I was able to stay home and raise my three sons. And I actually, actually had energy and brain space to start thinking of some other things. I actually had time to write and publish my own book, my first book that is actually on Amazon. I actually had time to look for some real estate to invest in so I can generate even more residual income. So I don't really have a lot of time to go into detail about our residual income business because I really want to give you some keys and some tools to charting your success for 2020. But I promise before I in my part of the call this time tonight, I will give you my contact information so that you can contact me if you want to find out more about residual income if it's something that you need in your life too. 
So enough about me. When you were young, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you say to that question when the adults in your life asked you that? Did your parents provide you with everything you wanted or did you still want more? What about today? Are you satisfied with where you are in life or do you still want more? We didn't know it then, but the adults in our life, they really meant well. They were asking us to cast our vision, whether they knew it or not. They were asking us to cast our vision for our lives in the future. But today, let me tell you, it's urgent for us to have a vision for our lives and our future if we want to have more because we're not getting any younger. Birthdays are coming faster and time is just going very quickly. And if we want to have something different, we have to do something different. And that might be even different than what our parents taught us about creating a good life because they only knew what they knew. And times are a lot different than when our parents and our grandparents were growing up in this world today. But in the age of social media, it's easy to see people living their best lives, right? They're having more time, they're on vacation, they're having money, they're having more freedom, they're working less, and they're stressing less. And so you see that and you're like, what are they doing? But the real question is, what are you doing? It's time to start planning your success with 2020 vision. In other words, what will you do to accomplish your goals in 2020? First, let's talk about that. What are your goals? They say that you should write your goals down. They say that if you write your goals down, you have a higher probability of accomplishing your goals if you write them down. Another thing that I do with my family every year before the end of the year, sometime between Christmas and New Year's, we have a vision board party. My husband and my three sons, we sit at the dining room table, kind of where I'm sitting here right now, and we make a vision board, which is a pictorial representation of our goals. And we put, make sure we put this goal, whether you have a list of goals or a vision board of goals, you make sure you put it in a place where you see it often. So it can stay top of mind in the morning, before you go to bed, you wanna make sure that your goals are in plain sight so that you can be reminded of what you are committing to do for yourself. Now, a word of caution with setting goals. Sometimes we set our goals too big and we get overwhelmed and we lose steam before we can make any progress. This is something that Michael Jordan talked about because I know, I'm not sure if you knew this, but Michael Jordan did not make the basketball team when he first tried out in high school, right? Amazing, right? So his goal was not at that point to become an NBA superstar. His goal was to make the basketball team, okay? And so his advice from that experience is to set your big goal, of course, but to have stair-step goals along the way so that you can feel a sense of accomplishment. And with every stair-step goal you make or accomplish on your way to your big goal, you'll get more confidence and build more, you know, commitment and steam along the way, as opposed to setting this huge goal. And then you just never really see the progress that you're making. I think that's what, what sometimes happens with uh, New Year's resolutions and goals. We set these big lofty goals, but we don't have the steps along the way and then we just lose things because we just feel like we're not having, making any progress and we just give up. So we don't want to do that. You want to set smaller goals that you can achieve so you gain confidence to keep moving forward. Now, even with that great advice from Michael Jordan and others, there are challenges to accomplishing your goals that you have to be aware of. I like to call the first challenge vampires. These are external forces. These are people in your life, people that you probably love, that do not believe in you and your goals like you need to be believing in you and your goals, okay? So sometimes they, they can be negative, sometimes they can be well-meaning, but they may try to steer you, in, steer you in another direction. So you just have to be aware, make sure you stand steady, steadfast in your own goals and belief so that you can keep moving forward. Now, there are internal demons that we need to combat on the way to reaching our goals. And I like to call these flipped. They are fear, laziness, indecision, procrastination, and doubt, okay? Any one of those five things can just stop us in our tracks and stop us from moving forward if we let them take over, okay? So you want to make sure that you don't get flipped. You want to stay focused and make sure you always are taking consistent action toward your goals because if you stop taking action toward your goals and take the easy path, that is not going to be putting you where you need to be. You want to take the path. You don't want to take the path of least resistance because success is not going to be easy. You're going to be tempted to do that, but you have to stay the course if you really want something different in your life for 2020. In fact, the path to success often feels like a fight. 
And I promise you, there are going to be obstacles that will try to block you on your path, like the external forces we talked about, like the internal forces we talked about. But your steady determination is going to keep you focused and on your will to win. I mean, you have to keep your eyes on the prize to actually get to that exhilarating feeling. There's nothing like the feeling of winning and accomplishing something that you set out to do. So be consistent, do something every day that you, um, to, that's gonna push you closer to your goals. And then I want you to imagine what your Instagram story is gonna be when you upgrade your life from ordinary to extraordinary. Imagine that. And the best part is your life is always 100% in your control. The decision to be successful is yours every day. Now, let me tell you a, a quick story that I heard and I just thought it was amazing and, and so great for this particular um, talk that I'm giving tonight. There was this king and um, he asked his, some of his men to put this huge boulder right in the middle of town, like in the middle of the town square. Right, so it was almost blocking the road, but not quite blocking the road. There was a, a little path, like a little uncomfortable path that you could squeeze through to get by, but otherwise it would be impassable. So it wasn't quite impassable, but it was uncomfortable to, to squeeze through that path. So the, the king instructed his men to put the boulder there to kind of almost block the path. And then the king went and hid in the bushes to see you know, what was gonna happen, who was gonna move this boulder. So he watched as, uh, night after night, and as all these wealthy merchants that were coming to town to do trading with his townspeople, they would get to the boulder and they would look around and then they would walk inch by inch by on the little small path around. So the king was amazed because nobody was moving, moving this boulder, not one person. Actually, the people in the town, they started to get mad at the king. They were like, how is he supposed to be the king? And he is not keeping our road safe and passable. So people started to be outraged at the king. They didn't know that the king was doing this for a purpose. So the king got out of the bushes and he went back to the castle and he was just surprised that nobody was moving this boulder. So time had passed and somebody from the village, a man from the village was carrying a bag of vegetables on his back as he was moving, going to take those to sell in the next town. So he came upon the boulder that was almost blocking the whole road and he set his, his vegetable sack down. He walked over to the boulder and the boulder was big and heavy. And so he pushed and he pushed and he pushed and he finally got enough momentum to start to move and roll that boulder. So he winded up moving and rolling the boulder over to the other side of the road, okay? And so he was walking back to go back and pick his vegetable sack back up and put it on his back and keep on his path. And he looked back and right where the boulder was, there was a purse and he was very curious. So he went over and got the purse. He looked inside. There were a hundred gold coins in there, gold coin, coins and a note from the king that said, this is for the person that moves the boulder. So I want to have you think about that as you go about setting your goals and go about moving toward achieving your goals in 2020. Because the moral of that story is sometimes you're going to have to do what other people won't do so that you can have the things that other people won't have. Now, being able to take care of those who have come before me and those who come after me are some of my greatest and proudest accomplishments. And I'm talking about my parents and my children. So my husband and I are very fortunate, very blessed to still have our parents with us. And we don't take that for granted. We are so grateful for them. And over the past couple of years, they've uh, had some milestone birthdays. So my husband's father, my father-in-law, he just turned 75 maybe two years ago. And we gave him a surprise party with the family. And, you know, he was very happy. It brought him a lot of joy. My mother-in-law just turned 75 years old this year. So in July, and she loves the casino. So we gave her a casino theme party. And I actually got in touch with people that she used to work with like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, people that she hadn't seen in years. So, oh, it was great to see the smile on her face when she saw friends from all phases of her life, people that she grew up with, people that she worked with, and you know, her family was all here to celebrate with her. It was wonderful. My parents, uh, both my, my dad just turned 70 last year and he likes to cruise. So we booked him a suite on a like nine day cruise with like 15 family members. So we all went and celebrated him. Now my mother turned 70 this year and she likes to cruise as well, but she wanted to go to Europe. 
So she went to Europe. She went, we sent her on a cruise to, uh, I think she was Ireland and Portugal and London. And, you know, oh my gosh, she was just beside herself. Very grateful um, to have had that experience. And let me just tell you, it, it warms our heart to see the tremendous smiles and joy that it gave our parents to have those experiences. And as far as our, our children, we're just grateful that we're able to impart the knowledge and, and wisdom that we've learned about success along the way at, with them at an early age so they can build upon the legacy that they're going to have and even multiply it as they move forward with their families. Now, in a few moments, you are going to be hearing from a dynamic woman that I have so much respect for. I mean, she really is going to have some information that's going to be very impactful for you. Her name is Ms. Perla Banal. Trust me you will be positively impacted by her message for you this evening. But before I go, I want to share with you the last words that my grandfather shared with me. And he said, Angela, the older generation has to look out for the younger generation. And that really stuck with me. And I want to say that to you because your success is not just about you. Your success is about your children. Your success is about your family. Your success is about your legacy and what will your legacy be now i promise that i will give you my contact information i want you to please reach out to me if you have any questions about goal setting business or residual income my email is agsolo9 at gmail.com again the email is agsolo9 at gmail.com and with that i'm going to turn the call back over to mr al thomas thank you wow you know, that's such a blessing, folks. I hope you guys got that. 15 family members that they took. Now, notice what she, she you know, they, she took, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they, her and her husband just took 15 members. Uh, all these birthdays and giving back to her parents, they took care of the bill. Oh, yeah. She's very humble about that. But that's what we're in business for. Wouldn't that be a blessing? You could take care of your loved ones and send them on things they like to do. Your mom, your dad, if they're still alive, or maybe your grandmother. <clears throat> or do something special for your kids. I mean, this is what this is all about, folks. This call is not a raw. It's, it's about people that I have a great deal of respect for. How many of you all like to send your families on a cruise for 15 days, 15 members for nine days? That's a blessing. Well, Lisa, ladies and gentlemen, um, and love, I love what you said. You, your life is in your control. Now, we got the last speaker. We got two ladies tonight. Tonight, we got another dynamite lady I have a lot of deal of respect for. She was born in Acapulco, Mexico. <laughs> and she moved to the United States looking for a better life. You know, in the end, she turns <laughs> for a better life. She, uh, she loves helping people. She got involved with a business that now she's helping people in Mexico. But listen to this. She works in the OR room in the daytime to be a blessed in the surgery room. Matter of fact, when I do calls, sometimes she's listening. Her and the doctor's in the surgery room listening to the calls. Mid, she's in her mid-30s. She's put over 3,000 people in her business from Mexico without leaving the U.S. soil. That's what it, you heard me right. She's, yeah, yeah, she put over 3,000 people in her particular business without even stepping foot in Mexico in 90 days. And now that's her way to give back to her country members in Mexico to give them a better life for they, them that they never have. And now she's working in Colombia without leaving the LA area and putting people in Colombia. And by the way, I just want to be let her know that Peru will be opening up in November. They'll make the announcement October 15th that Peru will be opening, yes. Without further ado, this young lady is a little piece of leather, but she's well put together. My dear friend, Ms. Perla Banal. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. I hope that you guys can hear me. It's just a blessing. Um, before I get started, um, I wanted to give it back to our host. Um, a fun fact about Mr. Al Thomas is that um, this gentleman, not only is he my mentor, but he is um, in the in the business world, but he's also my mentor spiritually. He is the reason why I actually went into my Christian faith. I enter a, a church, he kept inviting me, and then I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior, and things just changed for me. So he is the reason why a lot of the blessings that I have in my life 
um, are, are blossoming is because of him. So I'm so grateful and thankful. And another fun fact about him is that he probably won't even say, but he himself already is a very successful man. Um, you know, has been featured in many times in success from home magazines and, you know, does amazing, incredible things. But um, every day he's, uh, puts me on check and, you know, <laughs> mentors me and speaks to me and says the things that I need to hear, not what um, I, I, I want to hear, but he tells me how it is. Like, he doesn't hold back. So I'm grateful and thankful that he actually helps me with that. But also giving back to um, the beautiful um, young lady that I actually just pour into us, um, you know, fun fact about her that I was thinking about her today is that I heard this story, I don't know how it went down, and I'm not really good at sharing stories, so maybe I'll just like destroy and demolish the story, but um, Ms. Angela Solomon, every time I hear about you and I hear your name and just how much respect Mr. Al Thomas has for you, um, I think about uh, a story that I heard from um, the, the, our first president, um, the Obamas, okay? Um, what I heard was that in an interview, they asked um, Michelle Obama, our first lady, well, that was, um, they asked her, um, you know, what was the most embarrassing or more weirdest um, time when you guys were in the White House? And they said that one night they had a crazy time that they wanted to go eat at this restaurant. And um, Mr. Obama, President Obama and her got up and went to this restaurant. And then the owner were very persistent and they wanted to make sure that the first lady came to talk to him. And when she came back and sat down, Mr. Obama said, hey, why did that man wanted to talk to you? What is it that he wanted to talk to you? And he said, well, you know what, hold on. So he, she called him over and she said, you know, this is um, a, a person that used to like me. He was my crush and we, we dated. He was one of my boyfriends, my first boyfriend, you know, when we were very, very young. And then, you know, I wanted to, enter, this is his restaurant. And then um, Ms., uh, the, the gentleman walked away. And what happened was, is that Mr. O uh, President Obama told Michelle Obama, um, oh, wow. So if you would have stayed with him, you would have been a, an owner for the restaurant or maybe the waitress or something. And then Michelle Obama turned around and said to him, no, 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 you got this wrong. If I would have stayed with him, he would have been the next president of the United States. So where I'm going with this is that at the end of the day, yes, you are married to a very successful man, but you, you hold your ground and you're the foundation of your home. And I have a lot of respect for you and you know, Women like me, we see this kind of stuff that it's possible. You can have a beautiful life, marry the men of your dreams and have this beautiful marriage. But the fact that you hold your own and you brought not only the table, but the dessert, the dinner and everything. So I want to um, say thank you so much for being such a great role model for a young woman like me that I can see that here in the United States, there's a lot of possibilities. So thank you. And thank you for all your, I, I literally took notes. So I don't know if you can see them, but I was taking notes as well. So my name is Perla Bernal. I'm so grateful and thankful for every single one of you guys. And I really don't take it for granted that you guys took this Friday evening to stay with us. So um, how Mr. Al Thomas said, I'm from Acapulco, Mexico. And, you know, I'm so grateful and thankful that my mother brought me here as, at a very young age. And um, I didn't have a choice. I came here when I was very young. And um, I'm a mother, I mean, I'm not a mother, she's, I'm a daughter and um, I'm a sister. And, you know, I'm an aunt to a beautiful two nieces and two nephews. I don't have any kids, you know, but I'm so grateful and thankful. Um, and I am in the healthcare industry. It's been about 18 years now that I've been in the healthcare industry. And outside of my full-time job, I actually am a business owner. And it trips people out to know that I, I'm very busy of what I already do, but I'm also a business owner. And um, I don't take that for granted. And um, trials and tribulations in my life, um, I stumble into all of that. And I hope to be able to express every single one of those things to you guys and whoever's listening to us. So I want to welcome all of you guys. Um, on top of that, my business platform allows me to be able to um, um, have a cause and direct myself to helping um, children. And um, with my business platform, I'm able to help um, and participate in lock arms with Project Feeding Kids and Feeding America, where I'm able to feed children to help end um, 
childhood hunger here in the United States in our own backyard. See, everything that I do in life, um, after I've, I've gone through some tribulations, I realized that if I'm going to do something and live life, I have to design it the way I want it. And everything that I'm going part- to tell you and express to you guys today and share with you, I'm going to let you know that everything I choose is because I'm designing the life that I want based on um, uh, falls and, and tribulations that I've went through. Um, I also, um, I became a Christian in 2014, thanks to Mr. Al Thomas. I'm so grateful and thankful. I'm, I volunteer a lot at my church. And basically, um, I also do a lot of the pantry. I do a lot of the um, helping feeding the, the homeless. And I'm participating now in this new church in California with a youth group, you know. And I'm a greeter. And I do a lot of stuff. I keep myself very busy. But not only that, I also have been able to um, join this amazing um, organi- nonprofit organization here in the heart of Orange County, which is the city of Tustin, the city that gave everything to me. So I joined this organization. It's a, it's a group of volunteers where we all come together to be able to help our community to improve it. And the pillars that we serve are to help their veterans. So we're helping the veterans. And you might ask, Perla, you're from Mexico. Why are you helping? Well, here, I'm grateful for them because they were brave enough to be able to fight, sacrifice, so I can be able to have a life that I have now. People like me are grateful that I get to live in a very comfortable place and a, a place that I call home, even though I didn't have an option. So I want to make sure I give back to my own community in um, helping the veterans. Now, this also is helping um, prevention of domestic violence. So our women are very important. I'm very big about um, um, giving back in that way and also our children, prevention of children. Um, So with this organization, we help our next generation. And I'm grateful because someone took care of helped us because I was raised by a single parent, okay? So before um, I share my testimony with you guys of what I went through and how I went through everything that I went through, and today my topic is actually, I hope to be able to talk to the ladies that have ever been on a breakup or have anybody has lost a significant other um, or gone through a divorce. Well, I myself, um, I've, I was in a 15 year relationship um, with an, a, a, an outstanding person that just literally put like the standards so high for me. But what happened to me is that I, I went through a divorce and my divorce was so unexpected. It came like an earthquake, like a cutting ground. And literally everything got destroyed and everything fell apart before my eyes. Like my life was perfect and then it just all hell broke loose. So if there's any ladies here that you find yourself that you're just like, I don't know, I'm going through these difficult things. And I know that things happen all the time. But I want you guys to stay with me and listen because it happens every day and the population is probably ranking up. But what are you doing to make sure that it doesn't continue to grow? Like, you know, there's divorce all the time, but are you doing something to make sure that you stop it and we have more marriages staying together? So um, I'm going to share with you guys a few steps that I went through so I can be able to, um, that I was able to overcome in this past five years um, from a, 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 what I called it was the craziest part of my life. It was a season that really stretched me. Um, I literally went through a season where I lost everything. I, I try to try to blame the person, but you know, in reality, you can't blame somebody else because it's your own fault. And, um, I wasn't prepared to be able to live on my own at an age 32 at a different state. I was by myself. Um, I, I couldn't pay my, my, my bills. It, it, all of a sudden, like, I became a professional paying one credit card to pay the other ones. And I don't know if you guys can even understand that, but that's how bad it got. And eventually, I went through where I uh, had my car was taken away. Then next thing you know, um, my, I had an eviction. I went through everything that you can think of, but what I did to make a difference is um, I put myself back, in. not only by myself, but I had a whole bunch of people that helped me get back up there. And I, 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 I learned how to heal in a way that 
that I pray for my ex-husband and I pray that he got healthy and I pray for him. And through that, wishing best for him, I healed. But I'm going to show you the steps that I did. There's only six of them and I'm going to be very quick. But before I do that, I'm going to share a video with you guys that I listen to every single day. The minute that I listen to this video, it changed everything for me. So if Mr. Clements, can you please um, put that video? You can write everything down if you want to. Be brave enough to write every one of your goals down. But I'm going to tell you something. Life's going to hit you in your mouth, and you got to do me a huge favor. Your why has to be greater than that knockdown. And I love it. Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. It was almost a 10 count. He was stumbling. They were four, three, two, one. And ding, ding, ding. Saved by the bell goes to his corner the whole world is like up oh, that's it once he comes back out that's it Mike's gonna just hammer him and exactly that Mike Tyson came out like I got him I got this kid up against the rope listen to me many of you right now life's got you up against the rope you can't give up you can't give in listen to me if it was easy everybody would do it and if life's got you backed up I need you to do what Buster Douglas did Buster Douglas start fighting back world was shocked. <gasps> Goliath has been knocked down. What happened? And they went to Buster Douglas and they asked Buster Douglas simply like, what happened? And Buster Douglas said, listen to me, it's real simple. Before my mother died, she told the whole world that I was going to beat Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, my mother died. Buster Douglas had, he had a decision to make. When his mother died, he could die with his mother or he made a decision, I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was great than that punch. His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is and your why isn't strong, you're going to get knocked out every single day. So this video, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but um, nod your head if you can. Okay, great. So this video actually helped me so much to be able to make a decision. I had like an aha moment where I made a decision to say, you know what, this is not the person that I am. What am I going to do to make sure I get to the next level and to become a better person so I can be able to feel good about myself. So the first thing, if you're taking any notes, because this is um, a, a class for all of us, right? So to be able to help somebody else. So the first thing I did is I made a decision. And by making the decision, I changed my mind. I, I made a decision to have a strong mindset. And the minute that I changed my mind, it changed my life because I made a commitment to make sure that I changed, okay? So Ephesians um, 4.23 says, to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So if it's good for God, I think it's good for all of us to make sure that whatever you're going through, you have to make sure you change your mind. Make it, um, a, like a changed mind is powerful as a female, especially. Okay. Number two, you have to have a purpose. You know, Mr. Al Thomas always tells me you have to have a strong why. What is your why? What, what is it? What, 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 what is it that you want to get? Who, what's the main thing that's going to make you and push you to get to the next level, right? So um, your why has to make sure that it makes you like literally wanting to cry so and my why makes me get up early every single morning like for the past four or five years that I've met Mr. Al Thomas I don't even need an alarm I wake up because my why is so big and I have a purpose why I get up every single day okay so number three you have to have a strong work ethic literally you have to grind you have to grind you can't focus on anybody else who cares what the world is doing? You got to focus on yourself, okay? So without a why, you're not going to know, um, and I mean, you're, you're without a strong work ethic, you're not going to be able to, to pursue what is it that you're looking for, okay? So I have something that's, that, that I wrote down over here. It says that right now, as us as, as young ladies, we need to devour, like, I don't even know how you pronounce it, devour, D-E-V-O-U-R, literally 
every single day you have to grind, you have to go out there and demolish every single day. What really scares me is when I see women or young ladies or females, cousins or anybody talking and they like, if you ask them, what did you do today? And they tell you, oh, nothing. Oh, I'm going to do this. They're like, why? That is so scary. You need to act and work and live life with urgency. You have to have a contribution to this world and make it a better day and make it a better generation, how Ms. Angela Solomon said, you know? So you have to really have a big, strong work that can outshine everybody that you can. Mr. Al Thomas can outwork every single one of us put together in this whole thing. Okay, so if I can see my mentor getting up earlier than me and I'm barely trying to wake up and he's already, I'm trying to go to sleep and he's already, I'm still working. I'm like, well, I feel guilty going to sleep early when he's still working. So you have to outwork everyone because when you get younger, older, you'll be able to live the life that you want. Okay, number four, you have to have self-confidence. And the, how I'm going to say this is I hope that I'm able to explain it properly is Self-confidence is created by not neglecting the small disciplines daily, okay? And what do I mean by that is that you have to make sure um, that you do whatever it takes to make sure you get to where whatever your goal is for that day, that week, or whatever. So one of the things that I learned for myself is so I can have a self-confidence, I started to learn how to dress, have a right dress code, ladies. A lot of the times we confuse it that by showing more, we're more sexy when we're not. Showing less is more beautiful because the less that you show for that special guy that you comes into your life, that's going to be special for them. I didn't know that. And a mentor had to tell me how to start dressing. There's a place in time when you can do all of that. But when you start presenting yourself, taking care of yourself in a daily basis, you'll be able to get to the next step. Uh, you know, my purpose is to be able to help somebody else because an older lady told me, hey, Perla, if you don't show much of this, then you'll be better. You'll, you're successful in business, this or whatever. So I was grateful and thankful someone said that to me. Um, taking care of yourself, physical health, you know, eating properly, all of those little small things, you know, but do small goals daily, weekly, monthly to where they eventually you'll start doing yearly events um, or yearly um, goals. Okay. So these little small things, um, small steps will help disciplines will help you um, develop the self-confidence and, and posture and you'll be able to walk in and start attracting the right people. Okay. All of these little things that might seem like whatever, these things help me get through where I was going through when I thought I was in a dark season. Number five, preparation. The most valuable contribution that you can give to yourself is preparation. Okay. Um, for me, ladies, um, as if I'm speaking to you guys, preparation is very crucial for us. Um, um, you know, the decisions that we make in the, in the preparations are the ones that are going to be for a lifetime. Every decision that you make, it's going to be impactful. Um, every single day, you don't know who's watching you or who's looking what you're doing. So prepare yourself every single day before. Put your little, you know, your clothes ready to go. Organize your house. Do meal preps. Do everything. Prepare yourself. Learn. Read. Um, I, I love to prepare myself to become that woman that I want to be. I read. If, to me, to have my successful business, I read about business. For me to know about more about the healthcare, I read those books. If I want to be able to, um, you know, get to another level of whatever goal I have, I go to leaderships. I invest and I sacrifice, but I do a lot of preparation to get where I need to get to. Okay, um, number six is um, character. After my divorce, I literally lost all my self-confidence and everything. So I needed to build up my character. And I really was like the number one hater of guys. <laughs> so, but, you know, and, and that's just me speaking the truth. You know, I'm very no filter, you know, but um, I needed to, I, I felt that I needed to um, be like, put my walls up. But no, I needed to work inside me so I can be able to develop this character so I can attract the right people in my life, okay? I wanted to have high values. And in order for that, I needed to do self-discipline and um, personal growth, okay? Um, this one might be a little bit weird for everyone, but number seven is think before you speak. 
ladies, <laughs> this one was really hard for me. And um, when you're around people that are already successful, um, sometimes the last thing they want to do is talk. And then they say, you say have a better conversation with no speaking. It's weird. But you could only experience that when you're around people that are already successful. Okay. Um, I believe that insecurities are very loud. And posture and confidence is very silent. And I know that because I see around the people that are the most successful around me, they're the most quiet. When you see the women that are the loudest and they're trying to grab attention, they're the most insecure people. You got to pray for them, okay? So <laughs> the less you speak, the better you're able to, um, to listen. Many of, many times we're, we're so busy listening because we're ready to have a response. But you got to learn to chill and be a good listener and listen and sometimes just by being a good listener, you don't even have to answer anything because that person that's talking to you, they answer and they had the whole conversation on their own. You need to become the best, the best listener that you can because by being listening to others, I've been able to accomplish things that I'm very grateful and thankful and I'm proud of. But not only that, my family is proud of. And I could have gone the wrong way, but no, I decided to be a student to everything. And one of the things Mr. Al Thomas, the person you love, he's right there, you can see him. I don't know if you guys can see him. That's the person that always kept telling me, Perla, even right now, he's texting me, Perla, wrap it up, wrap it up, you know? But he tells me certain things and he's just molding me. He's just shaping me. He's making me, helping me grow to become the better person that I need to be. Okay, so um, you don't always have to know it all, ladies. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that that most insecure people are the ones that want to come in into a culture and they want to be able to, they know it all. If you're the one that knows it all, then you need to get yourself better circles per Mr. Al Thomas, <laughs> you know? So you need to make sure you're, you're a student to everything, you know, and humble yourself. Um, uh, those are the only things that I've actually, um, the steps that I've had to take to be able to get to uh, the right mindset to be able to accomplish the things that I have. See, to wrap everything around is that I get to work in a place right now that I get to choose to go to work every single day because I want to, not because I have to. I chose to be able to be in this business in that job because when I was small, I got sick. And this little thing that I wear, everything that I do every single day is exactly what I went through when I was a baby. So I chose to be in the field where I'm making a difference because all those nurses, they took care of me when I was small. So I chose that field. And I chose to be able to have a business where I can be a contribution to this world, but not only here, but to my other countries, how Mr. Al Thomas said, and to continue to grow in that way. And, you know, uh, Mr. Clemens has a, a, a picture right there. And that's the picture of my mother and I. And I've learned how to celebrate even the smallest victories. And for a lot of people that might think, you know, permanent residency, it's not a big deal. Okay, that's great. But it was a lot of trials and tribulations our families had to go through. In that picture that we took right there, my mom decided to get champagne and celebrate with me. And I said, Mom, why are we doing this? You don't drink this. And she said, Mija, I'm very proud of you. If you don't make not one penny or anything, I am the proudest of you because you took your darkest season gracefully. You never complain. You just you put your head down and you decided to work and be a big example for all of us. And I see you as my mentor. Her telling me that was the biggest reward I could ever got. So that picture was the most special picture that I can have. Everything that I've done for the past years and everything I went through, it was worth it. So I hope that I was able to um, somehow generate something to you guys or transmit in one way or the other, that if you find yourself in, in a dark hole or you're going through a breakup or something, you're able to um, make the best, make your mess and turn it into a message. And that's all, Mr. Al Thomas. Okay. All right, thank you. Wow, Mr. Perlinall, thank you so much. Ms. Angela, uh, Ms. Angela Solomon, are you still there, dear? <clears throat> yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, I'm ladies, real, I'm sorry. Ladies, real quickly, I have two questions. Maybe the two of you can chime on in, in a minute or less on each one of these two questions that came in. Uh, one, ladies were asking, what would you do 
when you're faced with fear on the way to your goal? What would you do when you're faced with fear on the way to your goals? How would you ladies handle that? If you're faced with the fear on the way to your goals, because you know that you, sometimes we get fearful on the way to our goals, what would you do to handle that? So lady? Um, I'll just go first. I want to say, you know, I'm going to be human first. and I'm going to actually feel the fear and recognize it as fear. But sometimes when you feel that fear or you, something is coming in your way to kind of block you, it really means that you're on the path. And so I'm going to feel the fear and I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm going to take it as a sign that this is something I need to keep pushing forward to. So I'm going to be human, feel the fear, but I'm going to keep pushing forward toward my goal. You know, I remember a lady, her name uh, from, from Little Rock, Arkansas, and she was in my, uh, I remember she always told me, she says, go, you got to go on ahead anyhow. <laughs> and I thought that was, I never <laughs> forgot that. You got to go on ahead anyhow with that Southern accent. Ms. Yeah. Pearl, but how would you answer that? Just do it. I mean, for me, this is already uncomfortable. This is a fear for me, public speaking or speaking or sharing, being um, vulnerable. So I know that it's not about me. I am a vessel just to be able to somehow bless somebody else. So don't think about you. Um, don't think about, don't, that's just your ego telling you something that's a lie. So just do it. Go for it. Go. 100%. Nike, 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 Nike slogan. Do just do it. I love it. Last question, lady of the evening, real quickly. What if your husband or in your case, Ms. Perlman, or boyfriend is not on board, being that you're powerhouse women. What would, you know, how would you handle that? What if your boyfriend or husband was not on board? So in, in our house, we, we have a rule that we have to put everything on the table, right? So we put everything oh. on the table, we have to discuss it. And, you know, sometimes we do have to agree to disagree. And if that's the case, then the person eventually comes around when they see some type of results. Everything rises and falls on results, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, if, if that's the case and your significant other is not on board, um, if you at least get to agree to disagree and you're able to move forward, get to success as soon as you can so you can show that success and show that what you're doing is worthwhile. So results trumps everything. Gotcha. Okay, great. Ms. Pearl Banal, how would you answer that, young lady? Well, if I had a boyfriend or if I had a husband, I think that it's best if it's easier for me to ask for forgiveness than for permission. So I would just go for it and then show the <laughs> Show the results, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I said husband, and I know Miss Miss uh, Miss Solomon is married. And that's why I said or boyfriend in your case, because I know you're not. Okay. Well, listen, I want to thank you all for your time. Everybody on the call tonight that are calling in, a lot of people called in, a lot of people have left and came back on, and we want to thank you. Uh, we'll get the numbers in tonight on how we did tonight. Next Friday, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have Miss Monica Bragg, the wife of a dear friend of mine. She's a dynamite lady, too, of Mr. Nakota Bragg, and another young lady who's actually here in Vegas visiting this weekend is Sheila Smith, who's 23 years old own three or four houses in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, full-time student. And she's also doing some incredible things around her schedule as well, which I'm very excited and very proud of her as well. So in that conference call number next week, uh, the Zoom call number is going to be a different number. So take it down now, 629-318133. I repeat, 629-318133. Three one eight one three three. One last time, six two nine three one eight one three three. And we'll get the word out uh, real quickly coming up uh, in the in the next couple of days. But today was the first of four segments we're doing, not just for women, but women to understand these are very powerful women that I have a great deal of respect for, and they're doing an outstanding job in their communities. I'll send a job in building a massive uh, income around their schedule, full-time, part-time. But the blessing is they're doing just a great thing. And I just want to say, ladies, I respect you. And we need to have more men respect them calls of women doing and having an ear to things. You guys are magnificent and you in your own right are, do respect it. And I think the last thing I searched, I, I wrote a note here that, uh, what was it? It's, uh, uh, I just wrote the note. What did I do with the note? Oh, be bold and go forth and keep mm -hmm. multiplying. Ladies, thank you so much. God bless you. Hope you guys got a blessing tonight. Thank you. We'll see everybody next Friday night. Same bad time, same different channel. God bless. Good night. Thank you.
Great chat. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.